Hello, my name is Jorb, I love gear, and this is the DF Audio Mini Bay. In some ways, it's a totally typical patch bay. You plug in one row of things that make sound, you plug in one row of a place where you want that sound to go, a mixer or an interface, and you make those connections in between. But in other ways, it's very different. It's designed to sit on a desktop, and all of the interconnections are made with 8-inch TS jacks, just like Eurorack. To me, that immediately opens it up as a more inviting piece of gear than the sort of traditional 19-inch rack mount patch bay you might see. And I'm willing to bet a lot of you might agree. This video is about patch bays in general, and you'll see a lot of examples about how to set them up and use them, the sort of things they might allow you to do. And those examples and that advice will be useful to any so described patch bay, but I will be paying special attention to the features and form factor of the mini bay since it's my only example for today. Here's a disclaimer, DF Audio sent the mini bay over for me to look at and make a video, but they aren't paying me anything and they don't get to tell me what to talk about. I'll link the website below, the pricing is in Australian dollars, and right now it's just under 200 US dollars for this. If you're subscribed, thanks for coming back. If you aren't, I hope you consider it. It helps me grow. Uh, like the video if you like the video. <laughs> um, yes, like I said, DF Audio website will be below, along with a link to my Patreon and my merch. Okay, everything from here on out will be actual learning. Let's start with what the f*** is a patch bay. Typically, you'll see them in rack mount form, and I'll pull up some examples for you, but a patch bay is just a tool for routing and organizing cables, routing and organizing signals. Often, it will be normal audio quarter inch TS mono jacks, but it could be anything. Anything could be a patch bay. But a lot of what I'm going to talk about is specific to audio patch bays. I am focused on moving around line level signals and the outputs of synthesizers and the inputs of effects into my mixer, which also works on quarter inch jacks. On the mini bay, it's TRS jacks on the back that are connected to eighth inch jacks on the front. Or in this case, it's really the top if you want to consider it that way. But ignoring any intention and ignoring any context, yes. It is just jacks connected to jacks. And it's important to think about it that way, but they do offer you more than just the same thing a cable could do. It would be reasonable to consider using a patch bay anywhere you already run cables, between an instrument and a mixer, or between an instrument and an effect, or that instrument to that effect to an audio interface, for example. Those are all places where you might want to have a patch bay instead of just a cable. But why? Why would we want to have something in between when we could just run a cable between them? Because it brings you more control in a more convenient place, and that means you'll experiment more. Let's start with an example. You will see my D50, my Juno 106, and my JX8P stacked up high, and in the simplest way, I talk about those connections being a more convenient format. This might feel very superficial to you, but I bet there's some studios who will say, ah, I could really, really use that. If you have your synth stacked up high like this, and their jacks are against a wall, using a patch bay, you can bring those out to the front. Might seem minor, I actually think it matters a lot. Okay, let's actually get into that example. Here's an example setup. I have a few synths with stereo outs. I'm using my Roland stack of the JX8P, the Juno 106, and then the D50. Let's say these two separate TS jacks are going into my audio interface. One's left, one's right, or they're track one and track two, however you want to think of it. But I need to get this into the back of the mini bay, so it needs to be a TRS jack. And let me show you, there's a few things we can use to do that. There are insert cables, like this, that go from TRS, that go to two different mono TS jacks. And so if you aren't familiar the way these work, there's three places to make a connection on this cable. A tip, a ring, and a sleeve. These are separate conductive tracks that connect to separate wires in here. And on the other end, look at the way these are labeled. Ring and tip. So the signal on the tip goes just to the black jack on its tip, and the signal from the ring goes just to the red jack on its tip. And the sleeves is the ground connection, you can think of it like that way, but the sleeves are connected on all three of them. You can think of this as a stereo jack into two mono jacks, or you can think of this as two cables packaged into one that you split out into two more. That verbiage in a lot of ways is interchangeable, but it's important for you to understand that the information passed on two TS, tip sleeve, jacks can also be brought into a TRS jack. I have a bunch of these, like I guess you call them Y breakouts or insert breakouts or something, but because I have a lot of stereo cables already. So I'm going to plug into the back of the mini bay on the top here to channels B, 1, and 2. Okay? And that means that if I plug into one each, this left and right side, they'll come out to B1 and 2. There's not a right way or a wrong way, but common practice would be 
one row that's all your interface or your mixer, and the other row would be all your instruments. So again, here's our hypothetical. <laughs> These are going into my audio interface. I don't have a two input audio interface to demonstrate with, but it is going to my mixer, so we should be able to hear it. And I need to get a connection from the synthesizer in. Well, I showed you that Y insert cable earlier, and I have the two plugged into the left and right, and they come down into this jack, this TRS jack. I can plug that into the top, then I need to make the connection between what they're broken out to here on the interconnection part. So that's A1 and 2. So the left goes to the left, and the right goes to the right. Now we can hear it. Wonderful. Great. Okay. Well, what about one more up? What about we turn on the Juno? Here are the two cables going to the Juno. They're two separate uh, guitar cables, TS, into another TRS, and we're gonna plug that into the next two A slots. We still only have two outputs back to our audio interface. The easiest thing for me to do is unplug those two and move them up. So now, I can't hear the JX8P, right? Because these two connections aren't going anywhere. But I can hear the Juno. How about a third? I have on this stereo cable, the very top here, the D50, turn that on, and that would be the next two, right? So five and six. Great. Great, so I could do, if I was feeling really silly, I could do one side of the 8P and one side of the D50. You wouldn't want to do that, but I just want to demonstrate that that's the way these things are working. These connections on the back are broken out to these connections on the front. And for making the connections in between, these are just normal Eurorack patch cables. And we look, we talked about TRS earlier. These are tip and sleeve, they're mono. Great, there's a few other things I could demonstrate with this connection. A lot of patch bays have a feature called normaling. And what we've learned so far, you would think I wouldn't be able to hear anything because nothing's plugged into my audio interface jack, which is just B1, B2. Not on these cables, right? But, and normaling means if you have something plugged into A on the back and something plugged into B on the back, those jacks will be connected. That means we don't have to make the interconnections for the things we sort of consider our default, but so long as we're lining up our jacks in a logical way where, for example, my whole bottom row will be interface channels or mixer channels, and everything on top will be sound sources, then we don't have to worry about plugging in the cables we would always have ready to go. On the mini bay, normally something you switch on per channel. Uh, mine came with no normaling switched on, but I switched it on for the first half. So if I plug anything into one through six, they're automatically connected. Now the mini bay is what we consider fully normaled. So if I plug jacks just into the top, connection is no longer made. If I connect jacks just into the bottom, the connection is no longer made, right? We can do it on one channel at a time. But there's such a thing as half-normaled, and in a half-normaled configuration, we could plug jacks into what we're considering the top row here, and your signal would still continue. Okay? Great, good examples. Uh, but what if we don't have a mixer, or we ran out of mixer channels, and we want multiple sounds to come into our two audio output paths? Well, one cool feature of the mini bay is these two separate three to one passive summing mixers. So let's continue with our example of I've only got two outputs to my audio interface and I want to connect all three of these synths at the same time. Realistically, if I have these synths, <laughs> I'm somebody who would have a mixer too, wouldn't I? But let's continue with our hypothetical. And so remember, A1 and A2 right now are the left and right of our JX8P. So I'm using purple for them. A3 and 4 are what? The left and right for the Juno. So we'll use blue. And then A5 and 6 are the left and right for the D50. Bring all those together. And now, don't hear anything because I've broken the normaling on the first two channels, which is the only thing we might hear. But just here's our example again. If I unplug those, D50 makes it through. Or excuse me, JX8P makes it through. Let's put those back in, and then I need to get the result of the summing mixer back out. The only two outputs we have plugged in right now, that is B1 and 2. 
So we'll consider this top one. I think we're actually hearing it on the right, but it's one of our left or right channels. And then here is B2. A little bit of volume drop because it's a passive mixer. Nothing's getting amplified in or out of it. But we can hear all three of these synths, all three of these synths passively, but mixed down all the way just to two jacks. Wonderful. Okay, I like this experimental camera angle, but let's try something else. Now I've got a mono output mini log and a digital delay pedal. Let's start with just the mini log. It is monophonic out, right? And it's only on a single jack. And so it looks like any normal TS jack. And so I'm gonna plug that into the output of the back here. And then I will bring the other end back and let's just plug it into A1 and 2. Let's see what we hear. Just on one channel, right? Thing. We're normal, right? So A1 and B1 are connected, A2 and B2 are connected. We're only hearing one channel because this is a monophonic out, right? It's passing a single signal and we're passing it to one of these two. So we can find out which one by breaking the normaling. It is two, so if I plug A2 into B2, we hear it again, but A2, which is the output now of the mini log, we're on the tip of what would be a TRS jack. I can move to the other side. Now, if I want to connect it to both, this is a bit of a hack, <laughs> and I don't know if this is kosher, but I just want to show you options for working without the insert cables. I have this Eurorack splitter cable. So this one big blue jack goes to this female end and this male end. So I plug another patch cable into the end, and we want to split out of A2 into B1 and B2. Now that one channel of audio from the mini log is getting plugged into both B1 and B2. Now, because I'm running into my mixer, chances are I don't need to use a stereo channel on the mixer. I've probably got mono channels on the mixer, or if I just unplug the left or the right, I can work it in mono too, right? But I'm showing you this just to give you more examples of how you might interact with these things. So I have this, another TS jack, plugged into a mono input on my mixer. And I'm gonna plug that into what would be B3 and 4. Okay, and then why don't we just continue the normaling? I'll put this into A3 and 4. So when you just plug in two sets of TS mono jacks, they'll work fine. And it's on one of these pairs, and we can find out by breaking the normaling. So if I break three, we still hear it. If I break four, we don't hear it. So if you want to use mono jacks, you can, but you're giving up half of your connections. Since I'm plugging into the jacks for three and four with TS jacks, it's only connecting to four. And that might be easier for the way you have the cables. It might be easier for the way your mixer runs. There's a lot of reasons why you might just want to do that, or you just don't want to buy these insert cables and you don't already have it. You can 100% do that. You can use a combination of it, but it's important to understand what connections are being made. So just to quickly recap that, if you plug in a TRS splitter or an insert cable, you will get access to one and two. If you're just using mono connections, TS, you will only get the second. So you get all the even ones on top and all the even ones on bottom. Cool, great. There's some more ways those work. I'm gonna leave this as it is. And just for visual sake, I'm gonna plug that in. So this purple jack is coming out to this purple interconnect on four only. <laughs> And that is the sound of the mini log. Let's say I want to plug in a digital delay pedal because I don't like the delay that's built into the mini log or I'm using a synth that doesn't have that, right? This is the exact scenario for one of our insert cables. So it has these T, R, and S, and they go out to each one TS. You've heard that a hundred times. <laughs> and I'm going to plug it into FX1 right here the TRS jack is going into FX1. Wonderful. Excellent, and from that insert cable, we want the tip to go to the input. We can consider that the send from the effect, and the red, for me, that's the ring. You want the ring to be the return from the effect. I'm gonna turn it on. We don't hear, hear anything yet, do we? I'm gonna disconnect this. We have normaling, so it's still connected, but I need to take what right now is going from A4 to B4 out and through FX1, because that's what we're plugged into here, right? And so the insert 
is on top. So for the way I have it ran- running right now, the top is the tip, and that goes to the input, and the bottom is the return or the output. And if I decide that I don't want to hear that effect anymore because this connection is normal, that's all we need to do. We need to disconnect the connections from A4 and B4. So yeah, you know what? I don't want that. And there we are. That's all we need to do. All righty. Now we've got three effects and three synthesizers or sound makers here. And I'm going to step you through everything I plug in, and then I'll use this setup for a lot of little examples. So I have, same as we have, a stereo channel from my mixer into a single TRS jack. And we're going to plug that into, we're going to plug that into B1 and 2. Okay. And then, and then I've got two mono channels from my mixer on these two guitar cables. And I could plug them into their own jacks, or I could use one of these splitters and take advantage of both of the things on that channel. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to plug I'm going to plug one into each side and now we have two mono tracks for B3 and B4. Cool and that's everything I'm going to do for outputs. And we'll see if we hear. Yes, we do. And it's on the left and the right. Great. That's currently running in stereo to the very beginning. And then I'm going to run the last two in mono. And we have two mono channels, if you remember. Let me show you here. They're two different looking guitar cables. We have these two jacks into B3 and 4. So why don't we preserve our normaling and do two mono connections to the last two keyboards? I need one more cable. How about orange for the microcord? And the other connection here. Okay. So remember, we have things normaled. So A1 and 2 from the cycles here. On the orange, into the tip of this splitter. And that splitter out on its tip, which is this guitar cable. And I believe that would all be A4. And then the mini log on A3. And we can check some of those if we would like to. I've been talking about normaling all day. I'm going to break some normaling. I believe. Yep. So there is the microcorg on A4, the mini log on A3, and left and right. For the model cycles on A1 and 2. Great. How about we plug in our effects? I've got insert cables again here on FX1, TRS in, dual TS out. We want to plug black into the input. That is the tip, and red is ring. It's also our return that goes into the output. Let's get another insert cable, FX2. Let's run the small stone. Remember, our tip is our send, our ring is our return or our output. And now, this stereo chorus is a mono in and a stereo out. So we have a few things to decide here. There's a few ways we could run this. I'm going to run it in consideration with the way it will look on the front panel. So I'm going to plug into FX3 a mono cable. And that'll be our input to it. And then on the way back out, on the way back out, I have one of these insert cables with two guitar pedal patch cables, which is going to look really, really funny when I plug all this junk in. (laughs) But I'm using the cables I've got. How about that? Okay. And then those 
will come back in on FX4. Great. Okay, now we have a whole bunch of options. Let's say I want to run the micro corg through some effects. That's on A4. Let's go into FX1, which is our digital delay. And then you saw this before. I can come back out and go right into A4. And then we're running through there, right? Well, what if I don't just want to run through that? I also want to run through the small stone. Then I go up into FX2 and then back down into the same output. And we're hearing through both of those. And if I want to change, and it's quick and easy for me to go back to just the delay. Or if I just want to hear the phaser. I can do that, or I want to change their order. Now we're running into the phaser first. What if I run a run out of the phaser, which is FX2, into the delay, which is FX1? I can move all those pretty quickly. Now, since we're running mono in and stereo out of the Ibanez chorus, we've got a few options for what we want to do there. Let's reset. How about the stereo chorus now? We have a few options. Let's run out A4, remember, is our microcorg, and FX3 is where we go into the stereo chorus. So we enter the top there, and now we'll come out of one of these two channels for FX4 for the output of the stereo chorus. We can hear it. but it is just in mono. If I run it in stereo, what are our options? Well, currently, I only have one stereo group of channels plugged in, B1 and 2. Is there anything wrong with me plugging the two stereo outputs out of the chorus into that instead? Not at all, only now we can't hear the model cycles. Well, if I still want to hear the model cycles, what can we do? It's two outputs. They're coming into A1 and 2. The normalization is broken right now. I'm going to take, how about just one, and why don't we put it into where the microcore was? So yes, we're just hearing it in mono, but we can still hear it. Because I would rather use the one stereo channel I have for the stereo chorus. And remember our normalization. Can't forget our mini log between A3 and B3 here. <laughs> it still passes through undisturbed. Wonderful. Now, of course, I can run other effects. Let's put the delay on the um, model cycles here. That is FX1. Then I bring that out to one of our model channels. Four. And same as always, if I change my mind. Just unplug those things and go back to where we were. Great. I could run through little examples of that over and over again, but I think you understand what I'm trying to say. This, and actually, I like that the table looks like a mess, and I like that these cables are a mess, because this doesn't. And as soon as I get to a point where I'm like, ah, oh, overwhelmed, if I did a good enough job setting up, all I need to do is return to my normalization, and we can hear everything that we want to hear. But I have these options for flexibility. I have these options for experimentation. If it comes up that I'm working on a track and I say, hey, you know what? Maybe I want to flip the order of my effects. And that's as simple as moving around some patch cables. Or I want to try running this in mono instead because something else is stereo right now. And that might be important to the sound or the song you're working with or whatever. Anyway, I'm going to set up something to play these all together and play myself out. I could run you through more examples of different signal routing, and maybe I'd touch on your specific case, but I think we're all better served if I just pull out to the face cam and draw some conclusions. So yes, one more time, patch bays are just jacks connected to jacks, but they let you tap into the middle of signals you are already going to route, and that difference, that new option, is enough to make them useful to me. Ignoring the fact that, yes, they offer more convenient access to jacks if you have synth set up in some semi-permanent way that it's hard to get to their backs. If we ignore that, they encourage you to experiment because those connections are right in front of you. Things that you leave plugged in all the time, if you put a patch bay in the middle, now you see it and you think about it. Well, what if I move that somewhere else? What if I put something else in the middle of that chain? It encourages you to experiment simply by putting the options in front of you. I think that's valuable and that's true for any patch bay, but my thoughts on the mini bay specifically. Being laid out for desktop use immediately 
makes it fit better in the sort of setup that most people have today or I see most people having today. I don't see a lot of rack mount units. You see a lot of people laying things out on a tabletop. Effects and synths in their mixers, and this can fit right next to them. If there's any downside to the form factor or features of the mini bay, it has to be the fact that it uses insert jacks on the back. Yes, that is the reason it can be so small. That is the reason it's so inviting. That's the reason I think it kind of stands out. And you can use your your rec patch cables. All those things are possible because the form factor, and that is possible because you're using TRS jacks on the back. So I think it is a necessary choice. Uh, insert cables are not that expensive, but if you don't have them, it just seems like another thing to buy. Well, right on the DF Audio purchase page, there is a link to some pretty cheap insert cables that will presumably work fine. And I made sure to show you examples using just mono cables that, oh, you've only got four insert cables and you want to keep using more of your jacks. You can. You just, for each of those connections, like we saw, give up one of your possible jacks. It's not the end of the world. And you can use this very thoroughly with just mono jacks. But to take full advantage of the I.O., yes, you do need insert cables. I think for the trail for the form factor, that's absolutely worth it. I hope people do look into the mini bay. It seems so simple. And patch bays aren't exciting. Patch bays aren't sexy. But bring in out.